here at Universal Studios Hollywood, when you go back to the future, you experience a movie maker's view of tomorrow. But the real story of transportation in the 21st century is being planned and built right now, and in some surprising places. Catalina Island is only a little more than an hour off the Southern California coast, but it can seem a world away. Recently, I took a weekend getaway with valuable lessons for the future of life on the mainland. Car-loving Californians have adopted tough new air quality standards. The result has been the creation of innovative new clean air fuels. I'll check out some environmentally conscious alternatives to fill her up today and into the 21st century. And if you're really tired of that hour and a half commute to work, how about making the trip at 186,000 miles a second? That's the promise of an emerging communications revolution. All this and a lot more on Transit 2000. Most people know that RTD's Metro Blue Line runs from downtown Los Angeles to Long Beach. But this weekend, I'm packed and ready for an overseas adventure. And I've decided to take the Blue Line to Catalina. Well, not exactly, but pretty close. You can get a boat to Catalina from San Pedro, Newport Beach, Oceanside, and even San Diego. But I've chosen Long Beach because of the special ease and convenience of the Metro Blue Line and the city's new transit system. Only a few steps from the end of the Blue Line, shuttle buses wait to take me to either of Long Beach's two Catalina terminals. Five minutes later, I've arrived at an impressive new harborside facility. During the week, 12 boats shove off for Catalina from Long Beach. On weekends, 15 boats are available. Before I know it, the island materializes out of nowhere, and we're easing into Avalon Harbor. A trip to Catalina is a getaway from the fast-paced life on the mainland. But I soon discovered that the island has more to show me than just a good time. Shirley Davy has lived on the island since 1956. There are a lot of people who've never been here and are constantly surprised when they arrived here about how different it is. They feel like they've come to a foreign country. Uh, they talk about the relaxed pace. Uh, I think it's the exposure to being able to walk from one place to another and not have to get in your own car and drive and worry about parking. I have a lot of experience with people asking me about, well, when they get here, how do they get around and everything, and I said, you walk, because it's the most popular form of transportation in town. Since the island's automobile population is controlled by law, getting around Catalina is an adventure in transportation alternatives. Cars may be rare on the island, but convenient tram tours are among the best ways to get an overview of Avalon. And you couldn't get a better guide than laid-back islander Dennis Reidinger. We elect our own uh, judge here. Our judge is so busy here that he only has court on Friday. Starts the arraignments in the morning, goes to trials in the afternoon, and usually goes home by 1 o'clock. Tough to get a jury when everybody knows who did what to whom. After my tour, I stopped for lunch at one of the island's finest restaurants. From a harborside table, I have a perfect view of the Avalon Marina and the Green Pier where I'll make my first tourist stop. It's a popular attraction first created on Catalina, the Glass Bottom Boat, an excursion that's been world famous since the 1890s. After the tour's official greeter pops up to say hello, we're left to watch an amazing array of marine life just a few yards from the Avalon boardwalk, evidence of one of America's most precious assets, Catalina's natural environment. A nature center at Catalina's mountaintop airport introduces visitors to the ecology of the island. The center is a showplace for the work of the Catalina Conservancy. Doug Probst is president of the Conservancy. You're looking at California 100 years ago here at Catalina of what a lot of Southern California must have looked like then. You find plants and animals here that are nowhere else in the world. There are geology uh, features here that you don't see on the mainland. Again and again, we hear people say, don't let anything happen to Catalina. It's the one place I can come to to really put my head back together. 
Islands remind us of limits in our world, of space, time, and resources. In Southern California, fresh water is a precious commodity. On Catalina, it's even more so. When a developer proposed to build Hamilton Cove, an upscale condominium project in Avalon, the need for adequate water demanded an environmentally innovative solution. For Catalina's local utility, Southern California Edison, the answer was all around, turning the ocean into a reservoir of fresh water. Keith Lefevre runs Edison's operations on Catalina. Principally what we do here is we take seawater from the ocean and we extract the salt from it and uh, the processed water becomes drinking water for the residents of San and visitors of Santa Catalina Island. This is really a microcosm of Southern California itself. I mean, we have everything Southern California has except on a smaller scale. And we certainly have a, a very environmentally sensitive area as the state's population grows and the need for water continues to increase, then utilities up and down the state will look towards desalinization in the future. It seemed whenever I left my hotel, only 18 steps from the beach, I discovered something new from Catalina's environmentally conscious way of life. I certainly learned to live without my car. In the end, it's hard to sum up the feeling you get after a weekend on Catalina, but maybe Islander Shirley Davy came closest. Probably the best phrase I ever had was, it's just good for your soul. <laughs> <laughs>